Welcome, brethren. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm doing a video here on late Friday night. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the biggest liars in politics, the five biggest liars in politics. But first, let's establish that lying is wrong. Most of you know that already. But some people lie for practical reasons, if they can get away with it. If they can do something and lie and get out, get out of it, then it's okay. That's, you know, like pragmatism. Um, uh, now, there are situations like Rahab the harlot lied, but and God honored her for, that, for her faithfulness. Actually, she's mentioned in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, but that's an exception, not, not the rule. I don't believe you owe the truth to your enemies when they're trying to harm you. All right, let's get that settled right now. Um... The ninth commandment says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's Exodus 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, this was the law that God gave to the nation of Israel through Moses, and this has not been done away. This is the moral law. It wasn't given just to the Jews. This is the law of God to all of mankind. Let's get that straight. All right, I'm going to be reading from an article here. Um, by Gary McIntyre. Meet the five biggest liars in politics, all right? Dated October 20th, 2017. They've lied about policy positions, supporting veterans, and even their own life stories. Politics is a world of professional, full of professional and even pathological liars. But who are the worst of the worst? That's what an American, that's what America Unsponsored set out to discover. We've narrowed down our list to contemporary politicians, so forget former presidents Nixon or even Bill Clinton, although they're both spectacular liars in their own rights. Here's our list of, li of the lying five who are giving public service and all of politics a bad name. Number five. Shouldn't be surprised by any of these. Barack Obama, former president. He promised Obamacare and would bring down health care costs. It didn't. Or he, he promised that Obamacare would bring down health care costs. It didn't. He said that if you liked your health care plan, remember, you'd be able to keep it. Wrong. Two million Americans learned the hard way that this wasn't true. Former President Barack Obama even said he'd close down the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. Well, it's still open. I remember when he said he'd pull troops out of uh, Iraq, and he kept them there. It wasn't until much later that they were actually removed. And then he sent, what, 20,000 troops into Afghanistan shortly after he became president? Obama's eight-year presidency, that's all my words now, that's not part of this article, but Obama's eight-year presidency was marked with lies, half-truths and cover-ups. He even claimed to have enacted the largest middle-class tax cuts in history, which the liberal Washington Post gave four Pinocchios its worst rating for lies. Just this week, we learned that the Obama administration hid a 2009 FBI investigation into a Russian company that bought American uranium interests. Expect a lot more to come on that. Number four, Tim Murphy, congressman from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Congressman Tim Murphy will officially resign in disgrace from Congress this weekend. For years, Murphy was a darling of the pro-life movement, but it turns out he was hiding an ugly secret. A former mistress claims Murphy pressured her to get an abortion, and in text messages allegedly from Murphy, he claimed to wince at messages from his office supporting the March for Life. Republicans were reportedly so disgusted with Murphy that they pressured him to step down. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Republican these days. Liars can be found of both parties, in both parties, and of every race. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white or Asian. This is the condition of sinners, okay? Sinners who do not fear God. Do you understand that? Wicked people, men and women. From both sexes. Number three, here's a woman, Frederica Wilson, congresswoman from Florida. 
President Trump has accused Wilson of lying for claiming he insulted the family of a service member killer in Niger. And certainly Trump's Accusation seems plausible. Why else would a sworn enemy of Trump be listening in on the call, if not to take, make him look bad? But let's forget the he said, she said for a minute. Wilson's sudden compassion for veterans is hypocritical at best. At Town Hall point, uh, as Town Hall points out, Wilson's record of supporting veterans is terrible and even embarrassing. Wilson, known as the Mad Hatter for her penchant for wearing glittery cowgirl hats, even voted against a bipartisan bill to give death and burial benefits to the families of service members killed in Afghanistan. You can check out her shameful record. Number two, Anthony Weiner, former, is it Weiner or Weiner? Anyway, W-E-I-N-E-R, former congressman from New York. He was once the camera-friendly rising star of the Democratic Party, but former New York Congressman Anthony Weiner's career ended in total disgrace. Here's a man who brought the word sexting, sending sexually inappropriate text messages, into the American vocabulary. In 2011, Weiner denied posting a sexually explicit photo of himself to Twitter. That turned out to be a lie and led to his resignation from Congress. Then, in 2013, Weiner promised that he had cleared up his act, cleaned up his act, and launched a campaign for mayor of New York City. But he was lying again, and was continuing to send sex messages, sexed messages rather, to women under the alias of Carlos Danger. For his final act, Weiner exchanged sexually explicit messages with a 15-year-old girl in 2016. That cost his marriage to Hillary Clinton's advisor, Huma Abedin and his freedom. In late September, he was sentenced to 21 months in prison. And number one, perhaps the most notorious liar of the five, and this shouldn't surprise anybody, I'm sorry to step on your feet, well actually I'm not sorry, you need to be awo awakened. Number one is Hillary Clinton, former Secretary of State and presidential candidate. Yes, Hillary Clinton. If there was a lying Hall of Fame, Hillary Clinton would a room would have a room named after her. Remember the missing emails? Or the vast right wing conspiracy? Or Whitewater? Or the time she claimed to have landed in Bosnia under sniper fire? Huh. Just do some research on this woman. Even Clinton's biographer claims she has an uncomfortable relationship with the truth. A federal prosecutor named Hickman Ewing even reportedly wanted to indict Clinton for allegedly lying during a probe of the disastrous Whitewater land deal in Arkansas. The National Archives has been hiding that draft indictment for years, despite lawsuits demanding that it be publicly released. All right. Thought I'd read this. I thought it was important. Be informed that a lot of people in Washington, D.C., the District of Criminals, are liars, including former presidents and perhaps even our current president. Don't think that Trump is beyond lying, okay? He's a sinner also. I mean, we would hope that we could trust our presidents, but ever since Nixon and other presidents, we, we know that we can't. Our presidents lied to us. Ministers coming on as righteous have lied to us. Our politicians, our ministers, our clergymen, in other words. Um, Jim and Tammy Baker lied. And a lot of these charismatic televangelists have lied, including Oral Roberts claiming that God was going to strike him dead if he didn't raise, what was it, $8 million to, for his university? This was way back around 1986 or, or so, or, or right around I was going to college there, University of Pacific in, in Northern California. I remember doing a speech called The Ethics of Persuasion in Tele-Evangelism. It was a pretty good speech. I actually almost made it to the, uh, into the finals, the state uh, championship in, in public speaking for our team, but um, didn't quite make it. Didn't quite have the speech down verbatim. I didn't quite memorize it, but it was pretty well written, and it touched some of the, the emotions of the judges. Anyway, 
I was also in a play. I had the lead in uh, Brigadoon at the time, playing Tommy's part. And my memory is not the best, so I mean, I had a lot of words, a lot of lines to memorize. But anyway, that was that was an interesting experience. I enjoyed being on the speech team. I enjoyed drama, and um, I enjoyed doing that play. But that's all in the past now. So anyway, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with your friends. Just know that you can't always trust your ministers and certainly the politicians in Washington, D.C. You know, they need to be held accountable, whether they're professing Christians or not. Again, God's law stands over everybody. It's for everybody, whether you're a Christian or not. Even though the wicked are not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, the scripture says. They don't submit themselves to the law of God, in other words. But Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments, John 14, 15. So, if you say you love God and you're breaking his commandments, whether the Ten Commandments or scriptures like love not the world, you know, you got purple hair, you're a woman in rebellion trying to draw attention to yourself, you're what they call an attention whore, then you need to repent also. You know, you're a man, you got earrings in your ears, you got tattoos on your body. Yeah. You need to repent, you know. God says no to tattoos or markings on your skin. Um, so if you claim to be a Christian, have those things removed and show signs of true repentance. The fruit of repentance is that we regret what we did and we try to get rid of those things in our, out of our life. You know, we don't parade them around proudly thinking that we're okay with God. That's not repentance. That's not having a change of mind. All right? Hope you enjoyed this, and until we meet again, may the Lord richly bless you.